Hi, I'm Donald with Steambrite Supply, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the technical aspect of the El Diablo heat exchanger unit and kind of how the water flows to the unit, how it controls the heat. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to have to put my sunglasses on because I have blue eyes and it's kind of bright out here in Texas. Uh, to begin with, the water's going to come in through a quick disconnect port. Uh, that water travels back and goes back to this water box and there's a float in there to control the the amount of water in it. Now when the machine's running the engine exhaust and the blower exhaust, the engine exhaust is about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. The blower exhaust when you restrict the vacuum can be all the way up to 240 degrees and they're mixed in this junction here. Now there is a flat mechanism that runs through the stainless steel heat exchanger and there's a coil up in that heat exchanger to absorb the heat from the blower and the engine exhaust. Um, this temperature dial here is hooked back to a water box. When if you could come back here, I'm going to show them back here. There's three sensors in this brass box and that dial is this one right here sensing the water that's getting ready to go out the machine and what that does is that's controlling the uh, this box back here if you want to come around the corner this is hooked right here so you have your vacuum being developed by the vacuum pump and they've teed into it right here and there's this little control module so when the temperature is getting too hot it's going to actuate this and let the vacuum that the vacuum pumps pulling come down here and pull this arm so that the flap will either be open or closed depending on whether the water is too cold it's going to be pulled this way it's going to let the hot air run down the heat exchanger on the top half and then back down on the bottom half and out through the muffler if the water is too hot the flap is going to pull back this way and that lets, the, I'm sorry, pulls up this way to close the hole so it lets the hot air run directly out the front of the machine and not over the coils. The other thing that's going on here is on the front of the unit this is a what they call a switch gauge. It actually has two needles in it. One is sensing the temperature of the water and the other one is set about 235 degrees. Now if you come back to our temperature control box back here that's this red wire this isn't actually a wire this is actually a piece of tubing that has a gas in it and when the temperature is sensed it pushes the gas back and forth down that tube so that the switch gate now when the two needles touch it's going to actuate this solenoid this solenoid back here when the water is getting too hot when it gets hotter than 235 degrees it's going to open up and suck water out of the bottom of the mix box. There's a hose that's going all the way from this entry point down to the bottom. It's going to suck the water off of there into the waste tank when it gets hotter than that. The other thing that's going on here is a percentage of hot water is being sprayed into the box all the time. We have coming off of this temperature box there's a hose that travels down here through a um, orifice hole there's a really tiny hole in this so that a the water is kept in motion all the time so you have water spraying full time off the heat exchanger so the water that's heated up from the heat exchanger is always having a small percentage sprayed back to the water box now between that hot water being sprayed in here and we have the shape of this so this unit is going to get very very hot and you can see there's a little space here the radiant heat is going to pull up and around both sides of this water box so we have water hot water being sprayed inside of it we also have hot air coming up the outside of it this box is going to get hot so kind of hard to see but down here there's a, a sensor that's sensing the water temperature it's this hose down in here this black hose up to it um, 
these sensors are usually either set at 140 degrees or 175. I haven't checked with the factory to see what they've set this one at since this has high temperature seals in it. Uh, might be 175, but the, usually most industries use 140. But this water is now going to be kind of like your preheater. The 140 degree water is what's going to be fed into the pump. It gets pressurized and then runs into the heat exchanger. That hot pressurized water is what's running through this the coil mechanism and that ends up coming out the front of the machine. Now, so we have a lot of different controls. The other on this uh, thermal control box, we have a sensor here in the middle. Now this is usually set at about 285 degrees or in that range. I haven't checked with the factory to see, but this is a kill switch. Once, if you had some kind of malfunction, your switch gauge wasn't working correctly, or some kind of device malfunction got stuck, maybe you weren't descaling your machine enough, <coughs> and the water got too hot, it's going to turn the machine off when it gets too hot there. So, uh, the way it's designed is really efficient. Everything is easy to get to, and you'll be able to maintain that consistent 235 degrees if you want to have it that hot all the time. It'll be really easy to do, the way they've got this set up. The other thing as far as uh, kind of some uh, technical information about it, uh, this pump is what they call a dual splash vacuum pump. A lot of the vacuum pumps use uh, grease that you have to grease it with a, a zerk fitting or a grease gun. This is a double splash blower, so it's got actually the gear oil on both sides in the front gear and the rear gear. See, it doesn't require near as much maintenance. The only thing you have to do to maintain this unit is we recommend when you're not using the machine, the dump valve is left open to let it air out. If you're not going to use it for several days, leave the lid off. If you're uh, at the end of every day, there's a blower loop port right here. And when the machine's running, you can open up the ball valve, spray your lubricant in here, close it off, and then turn the machine off. And that's going to put oil on the blades that are gulping the air. Now the blades in here are not painted. This is raw steel and they're real susceptible to rusting. <clears throat> so by spraying oil on the blades, make sure that when you park it and you don't use it for a while, that combined with the fact that you leave the gate valve, the drain valve open when you're not using it, will allow air to get into the waste tank and let it breathe, or if you're not going to use it for many days at a time, you can just leave the waste tank lid off and that'll let that breathe out. On uh, servicing this machine is real easy to do. You can change the, the oil here. It has two spark plugs, they're easy to get to on the sides. Uh, there's also a uh, oil drain on the, uh, on the water pump, this holds a little bit of oil. There's a little sight window on the back side here. <coughs> They'll let you know the oil level. And ideally, you want to see a little bit of air space on the top of this bubble so that your oil is about 50% across that window. Right now, the machine's not on level ground, so it's not reading perfectly. <coughs> this device here is what they call a last step chemical injection pulse pump. It uses and senses the, uh, the piston that's traveling up and down in here to sense the, the movement of the water and there's a diaphragm and a check valve and these pulse pumps typically generate about 50 psi more pressure than whatever the pump set at and that allows it to suck uh, rinse aid up into the unit through your Dwyer meter where you can adjust the exact flow rate of it and inject that into your, uh, your rinse. Um, if you have any additional questions on this unit, you can always uh, give us a call or check our website. Oh, just to kind of also explain this, this is a, a vacuum relief valve uh, made by Tyco Valve Company. And these are preset at 14 inches of mercury. So if you accidentally got your hose up against the wall or maybe a really tight area, 
<clears throat> this is allow this positive